do it. Yeah, but then like you hear like the stories of the people that get like Aldabras and stuff stolen, and it's like, look, if someone has the the bank heist level ability to figure out how to get an adult Aldabra or anything like that into the back of a freaking truck in less than ten minutes without anyone hearing or seeing it, they kind of deserve it. Like they've worked well, for it. Like, it's funny. Some Mission Impossible level level work there. Oh yeah. So Marcus has a small group of different tortoises in his yard, and he made like a, a tortoise pen. It's a uh, it's it's a really appropriately sized pen for the stuff he's raising up, but he's got an adult leopard named Hank. And dude, Hank is like the coolest tortoise in the world. Well, Hank has had multiple air tags attached to him from now on because he keeps running away. And it's a gated community and they always find him, but someone, you know, a quarter mile down the street winds up walking his ass back. <laughs> a little, little collar on him like a dog. With it, he's just sticking an air tag right on top of him. Oh Go. Thing, you know? it right on there yeah, and that i think he doesn't want to i don't think he's actually glued it but he's stuck it on there with something so that like and it's it, it holds up in the rain and storms and stuff but every I once in a while something yeah oh. every once in a while he'll have to get a new air tag and stick it on hank so that's hilarious so yeah. wait does someone like find it and then they just scan it and it tells them that they're how does that No, work? he it, it goes missing an iphone thing yeah, it's an iPhone thing, and he goes missing, and he's like, all right, let's see where in the neighborhood Hank is, and then he'll look and be like, oh, God, Hank is 400 yards down the street. Let me go walk down there, and like as he's walking, there's like a neighborhood kid like, I think I found your tortoise, and like it's following the child home, you know? <laughs> like, feed me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe this one has some food. Yeah, touch, hey, touch, me, touch me, tiny human. What you got in your lunchbox? Run your pockets, dog. Right. <laughs> And it's one of those bougie neighborhoods where, like, a lot of families have golf carts. So, like, oh, yeah. I know they put him in the golf cart and drove his ass home a couple times, I'm sure. He just wants to you. ride in the golf cart. Yeah, Did exactly. Those, those Kinder Buenos or something in your lunchbox, kid. Mm -hmm. You know, your parents get you the good stuff. Nice. Oh, man. Dude, Anna Marie was shocked. I didn't know what that was until, like, two years ago. I had no idea. She's like, you never had a Kinder? I'm like, it's, no. It's Nutella. I mean, I love Nutella too. I'm a Nutella junkie, but I didn't know that existed. No one can convince me otherwise. It's just Nutella in different shapes and forms. That's it. Yeah, who knows? They're delicious. Not complaining. <clears throat> I had the sticks. They were they were tasty. Yeah. Nice and light. Yeah. Like yeah like, um, Nutella in Italy. It's like breakfast is no, dry yeah. meat, crusty bread, and Nutella. And yes. The darkest of coffees. Yes, <laughs> salt, salt cured meats. The way God intended. Nutella on it. Yeah. The way God intended. Nutella <laughs> is the devil. <laughs> Henry. Yeah. Yep, he knows what's up. But here we are. It's Monday night. It's episode two hundred one of Snakes Crazy. and Stogies, which is brought to you by BlackboxCages.com. You need a rack. You need a cage. Black box cages is all the rage. Uh. Use the code THN at checkout. Get 10% off your order. If you're in the general southeast sort of region or near North Georgia, save yourself a little bit more and just hit the pickup option and hop on down to Black Box and grab your stuff and then go home and go wild. Set it up. Put your stuff in it. You won't be disappointed. They, uh, I think all three of us here have Black Box stuff. I just got some on order. We'll pick up in a couple weeks. Yeah. Hell yeah. They're nice. You won't be disappointed. I've owned a bunch of different kinds. You can see I got some old school stuff behind me. Those black boxes are way better than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing. <laughs> you never realize how bad some of that older and like homemade stuff is until you get your hands on something like the black box stuff. And you're like, okay. Like, yeah, the other thing was tolerable. It wasn't that bad. But then you get your hands on the new stuff and you're like, how do uh, I, how did I even do this for seven years with this rack? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy little uh little little coin goes a long way but dude uh, it's crazy like finding fish tanks in the garage and it's like how did i do what how yeah. am i doing this like yeah. what was wrong with me we didn't know any better you know i have well i have that 20 gallon that i i got for that male conicus um because that one lavender corn came with it and so I, it needs a new lid but I'm like looking at it like i really want to set this up and do the uv and all that stuff and i'm like where the hell do i put a tank yeah like where i can see it and it's not going to be stupid heavy and like cause you know be in the way and cause problems and it's i haven't figured that out yet so 
the problem of having more than just pets. Yeah. And then Katie went on a, a garage cleaning spree and it ended up in the attic with some other stuff. And I was like, I was about to use that at some point in the next six months. Sure you were. I was. Okay. 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 I'll take her side. Don't it's like my chameleon flight cages I have in the garage. Yeah. I'm going to use them one day. Sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Danny Whitman said it'd be cool if they had racks big enough for adult blood. So they just had a new one now that's what Jake told me is the equivalent of like an FB90. Okay. So that might be fairly close. I don't know what people are keeping adult bloods in. And do they do six foot fibs too, right? They do yeah. 70, 72 inch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you get four or five game. of them. There's your rack. Let me see what Jake Jake told me because Jake was like gushing over it because he wants it for his pits. Yeah, I got the uh, I think it's a V the VE seventy or something V seventy yeah. yeah, whatever V70. the biggest one they had on there. I was like, yeah, I'm getting a three three stack of those. Nice, nice. Let's see. He said, Jake said, if we're getting technical, it's thirty five percent bigger than a V seventy, which is pretty substantial. The tub is five point five square feet, and the FB ninety is like six point one six square feet. And the V70 is only like four. What's up, Jason? So, <laughs> I've known Jason a long time. Dude, like, <laughs> color's the best. <laughs> he used to come in the pet store I worked at, and I was like, this guy's cool. I like him. He was a good uh, customer. He's probably filling his pockets with a with a with a bunch of stuff and animals. It's possible. We did we did always have uh, <laughs> thievery happening. <laughs> I can't believe you just flat out called Keller a thief. Jesus. I did. He's not. <laughs> no, I wanted to keep him around. He was uh he was law enforcement, I think, at the time. Nice, nice. He was one of the only cool cops. I was like, you're cool. <laughs> keep give me your number in case I get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So hit up black box about that rack if anyone's curious. Uh I don't know exactly what tubs they are using for it. I've only seen the video that Rob Christian posted in his story of it not that long ago and I couldn't tell exactly what size they were from that but Jake Jake asked him and, and got some more info so it's an option um, then hop on over to fullviusapparel.com use code THN at checkout as well get 15% off your order that is the exclusive promo code for THN listeners and viewers like you I've been working on some designs got some new stuff coming out here soon um, did a little test print this is another vintage chameleon thing um, i like it so got some cool stuff in the works now that i've i've got some some things ironed out on on photoshop and getting things where i want them because some of those older lithographs are really tough to get the uh the information out of in terms of the color separation and stuff but i've got a pretty good pretty good way of doing it now so nice um, stay in the loop with that and then cold-blooded caffeine Snakes and Stogies blend. You know you want it. I think today is the last day. They're doing a March Madness sale. I think the code right now is March Madness 24, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, let me look it up. I forget exactly what the what the promo was. But I will find out. I did a subscription to them. I'm just getting the Rainforest blend. It's fantastic. Classic, man. Classic. It's good stuff. It's going to be Christmas presents for everybody this year. I'm just sending them cold-blooded nice. caffeine. <laughs> That's the way to do it, man. Pinky's out. I love it. It's yeah. free shipping is what that, that is. Yeah. March Madness 24. So only a couple more hours left to do that. But grab that Snakes and Stogies blend down below. There's a link in the description. Uh, and you need to try it. Then Puget Sound Pythons, Jeff and Kendra in the Pacific Northwest. Give them a follow. Stay in the loop with what they're doing. Uh, they should be having eggs on the ground here soon if they don't already have some in one of their many projects. Oh, yeah. Uh, so stay in the loop there. Facebook, Instagram, Morph Market, all that good stuff. But we're here, episode 201. This week we're joined by John Calloway, uh, who's just over the border from me down in in georgia down in the deep south and kind of hopped on last minute with us i appreciate that welcome glad to be here um are you what are you smoking phil uh 
I busted out another beast. The rapper finally started to turn, so I was like, all right, I'll smoke a beast. Why not? The Gurkha beast. I know what you're thinking, Keller. Taste the beast. Taste the beast. Minotaur. <laughs> uh, I, I have a one of the new black and shade, uh, shade to black. So there's that. They did. Holy crap. Drew Estate a couple like a year ago did the blackened like the M83, I think is what it was called. And it's like the Metallica James Hetfield cigar. Well, this was the latest release and it's the shade version of that. Um, I smoked one probably a week or two ago and was kind of on the fence about it. So I was like, let me go ahead and grab another one and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Raj got a bunch of new stuff in recently, so I'll be smoking some some of the new offerings uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, kind of works out because it'll give them some time to sort of sit and, and, you know, breathe a little bit before I get my hands on them. So, yeah, for sure. This is the Corona Doble. So it's like a Churchill, basically sort of a Toro ring gauge, nothing crazy. Um, I do remember when I smoked it not that long ago, it was like, it is an interesting profile and blend, uh, whether that was because like I had literally grabbed one as they pulled the, like the plastic off the box and opened it. So it was like very, very fresh out of the box, but they've had a you know a little while to to breathe a little bit, and now we're gonna give it a shot and see if see what the the verdict is. Excellent, glad to hear it. Yeah, I got to find a, a another shop by me, man. the The shop I usually go to is getting kind of stagnant, and uh, I feel like it's a sign of my local tobacco smoking community going towards online more. Um, the only shop that's really full up right now is a uh, Monte Cristo branded shop. Yeah. And they also have Davidoff. They have a lot of Drew stuff. It's where I get all my Ligas. But again, it's, they're not going to be the kind of shop to bring in something hot mm-hmm. and new and fresh. So I got to, I got to do, I do have to give Raj credit cause he is pretty good about every year you know, at least twice a year, he kind of does bring in new stuff and brings back stuff that maybe he had phased out a couple years ago to give him another shot. Um, so he goes to PCA, which is that big convention out in Vegas. And, uh, so he's, uh, brought in some, the Fonseca Mexican edition, which I did smoke and it was really good. Um, he got some Don Pepin stuff that I'm going to try probably next week. Uh, Umbagogs from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, which are really good. That's it's so weird. Dunbarton and um, who is it? Uh, Placencia. I feel like their best stuff is the cheapest stuff. Like that Umbagog is like a twelve dollar stick. It was ten, but prices have gone up. Like that's one of his best compared to like all his fifteen and up stuff. Yeah, that Umbagog. Like that is the one I consistently go back to again and again and again. Um, same with Placencia with that reserve, like that's their cheapest one and it's their best, like in terms of flavor, it's the most interesting. It's, it's just good. So, you know, again, price have, uh, has a no bearing on, on if something's decent or not. So, yeah, for sure. And um, John, are you, are you imbibing a, uh, uh, an adult vice this evening? Oh, I am. I didn't have time for, uh, to go find a cigar, but drinking a old Forester 1870. Nice. Quite nice. Excellent. Excellent. I was, was going to die if you were like, yeah, I'm drinking the water out of the middle of my bromeliad there. I just poured it <laughs> in bromeliad. This is, uh, this is a tannin tadpole water. There you go. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Dude, that would actually be a really cool brand if you had some kind of bourbon or whiskey that was like jungle blend, you know, neon tetras swam in it for six months, you know, <laughs> <laughs> high tannins. You age the barrel in a tropical greenhouse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guaranteed to have a skeleton of a red eyed tree frog that's came to the fumes <laughs> at the bottom of the barrel. Mike Stefani said he's hitting a roll your own good stuff menthol in a gambler menthol tube. At least he at least he gets the decent quality rolling tobacco there. The good exactly. The good stuff's the good stuff. He's not messing around with that buoy or, or gambler tobacco. He's he's spending the extra couple bucks and getting the good stuff. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I am amazed that more people don't 
do that more because when you look at the compare, I mean, I'm not going to advocate for people smoking cigarettes by any means, but when you look at the cost of, of the roll your own stuff in comparison, like the price of cigarettes, it's yeah ridiculous, ridiculous. So my cousin, he had moved and it was kind of in between work and stuff. And dude, he showed me, he bought a, a like the two gallon freezer bag sized bag of loose leaf tobacco. Yep. And Literally, it's a pound. It's a pound yeah. Bag. And like 500 tubes that were filtered and it was like 32 bucks for both. Yep. It was crazy. It's like yep. 500, basically like 500 cigarettes. My whole thing is, and like, I love the little metal tin. You know, you have your little flip open tin, feel like you're in the 1930s. I love it, right? I don't have the gumption to, I don't have the time, the memory, what have you, to remember to roll 10 or 20 cigarettes the day before to yeah. cover my ass for yeah. the next day and a half or whatever that it was is. the biggest complaint is people are like i don't have time to like i did it for a while and then it was just too much work well and it's like my thing is let's say i roll 20 cigarettes and then i have a really bad day and i'm smoking a lot or i go out drinking with some friends and i'm smoking a lot and i'm like oh no i'm out i could just go over to the gas station and buy another pack no i gotta wait and go home and roll them myself like uh i almost want to it's almost worth the price of convenience, as sad as that is. Yeah, that's kind of what you're paying for at that point. First world but, problems. Yeah, right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Get, like, if you're gonna, I, I also noticed if you're gonna do it, like invest in a good machine to to make them because yeah, I saw people skimp and get the cheapest ones, even like the electronic automatic ones, and after a while, like they just get super bogged down like i don't know if it's the actual tobacco gets into like the gears and stuff and how these things work and people would be like that eh, none of these last and i'm like get the metal hand crank one and that thing should last you an eternity like you're trying to get the cheap plastic ones or just the automatic ones and it's not gonna work might work for the first like month but then after that it's just gonna struggle mike's smoking for a month he's just spending a day prepping cigarettes i love it Oh, Adam Chesler said he used to roll the Perique blend of American Spirits. I didn't know American Spirit had a Perique blend. I didn't know American Spirits sold loose, to be honest. I thought they only sold packs. That's crazy. Perique is nice. That's a Louisiana tobacco. Tasty. Spicy. Very unique. Unique Perique. Wow. <laughs> so, Stefani says three packs of Newports is $25 plus. He buys a one pound of good stuff menthol and 600 tubes for less than $25. That's insane. And all that extra money goes into those awesome enclosures he puts together. Yeah, yeah See? exactly. Incredible stuff. Exactly. How do, you, how do you get to be at the top? You roll your own cigarettes, kids. Yeah, yeah I feel like there's a, uh, a Macho Man Randy Savage quote in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do like you get the, to the top? Slim Jim commercials or something. Roll your own cigarettes, kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Menthol in the tube. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> very clearly <laughs> practice that a lot. You do that a lot in your free time, don't you? <laughs> not, not that often. Not that often. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, anything new down in Florida? uh not in the room yeah don't smoke kids mike stefani says um <laughs> not in the snake room but i went out herping with anna maria the other night and we went looking for toads it was 64 degrees fahrenheit dude the weather's been so goofy it was felt great it was high humidity it was like 60 percent humidity 64 degrees fahrenheit i was like yo let's go look for toads we were gonna go to this one spot and they were doing road work and it, the road was closed and i was like i'm not driving this detour to go look for toads like let's just go to this other spot and this other spot i never find snakes ever and if i do it's like a black racer at two in the afternoon right so it's almost nine o'clock at night 64 degrees fahrenheit 60 percent humidity clear sky slightly breezy i'm like all right we're gonna find some amphibians hopping chirping croaking whatever didn't find a single amphibian but the minute i hit the road my lifer black swamp snake Ooh. just chilling there 
crossing and i was like whoa and i got out and i picked it up and and maria was like what is that i was like it's a called a black swamp snake check this out and i flipped it over and just a neon orange belly mm. so we got some pictures she held it i held it we let it go and i was like all right let's drive a little more not more than 20 minutes later an aberrant scarlet king snake whoa just cruising and i was like this is bizarre it's 64 degrees why are yeah. you animals awake so that was the only two animals we found the whole night. Oh, and a couple of raccoons. What would you do? But uh, but yeah, that was monumental. It's her first Scarlet King, my first swamp snake, her first swamp snake. It was awesome. So other than that, no news is good news. No, what's no action on the rink front? So I I did not pair them yet because I went to do it and she was in deep shed super dark and i was like all right cool and she looks swelled up i was like this has got to be ovulation and at the time i was going to put them together i was like you know what let me let her shed let me see what she looks like after after she sheds she sheds out she's still swelled up plump and i was like all right cool i'll do it but they were going bananas because i had rats in the room so that was this was what's today today's monday this was friday night so tomorrow because I'm going to feed Wednesday. Tomorrow, I will see. And if she's still swelled up, I'll throw them together. Nice. And see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to miss that that window. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and they got a huge season. So I'm not, I'm not too well, worried. Yeah. I'm not too worried. I'm just, uh, the male is super active. She looks swelled up. I have no idea what ovulation looks like. And no one can tell me what ovulation looks like. So we're just rolling the dice here. Is there you cannot like those? You're not cohabbing those, right? So they were cohabbed by the previous owner, um, which I think is crazy because I don't know how the hell he fed them. Like they're bananas for food, um, but yeah, he had them cohab together. And even when he when he gave them to me, they were in the same tub. They were in like a big sweater yeah. box tub. And I was like, "Oh, you got them together?" He goes, "Yeah, man, they've been living together for two years." I was like, "Oh, all right, cool." So he had no idea about cycling or cooling or anything like that. So th no, there's no thinking they're cannibalistic they can be but they're typically not so okay. for some I'm reason gonna, I they, they were a lot i mean they'll eat other snakes for sure but like them their own kind the same size highly uh, highly yeah. unlikely but yeah. not without not outside the realm if you know what i mean right um and she has gotten a little bigger than him so mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna throw them together i'm gonna wear a long sleeve shirt some latex gloves put the cuffs of the sleeves in the latex gloves wear my face shield and hazmat just basically suit. it's a hazmat suit they don the hazmat suit <laughs> and uh honestly man i'm gonna i'm just gonna have two sets of pilstroms if shit gets batty i'll just separate them you know just deal with it so but i i'm not i'm not too concerned man i've i've, I've paired a lot of cobras and you can tell in my personal opinion you can tell pretty quick yeah if it's not gonna go down yeah like both in a defensive combative situation or in a romantic way if yeah. you put them in there and like nothing happens and they're just sitting there, you're probably not going to have any luck. If the boy starts going nuts and the girl is like, oh my God, get off me. Then you're probably going to have some romantic action. If the two of them just start going at it, well then just, you got two boys and shit's going to go down. So, mm -hmm. but actually I have great video. The last Cobras I paired were the uh, Indo-Chinese, the Siemensis, the black and whites. And, yeah. uh, and dude, when Henry and I put the boy in the girl's cage, it was textbook breeding. It was crazy. I got video of it. And uh, regrettably, I posted it on Instagram. And I guess however I did it, I had put like Barry Mandelow or something in the background to make it funny. Well, that music stuck on the video. So now like that for that video forever has like <laughs> the, the smooth baby making music in the background. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. So, but that's that that is what transpired this week. So. Give it a shot. See what happens. Yeah, man. The uh I was hoping so the the female rhino was out a little bit more than than usual today and yesterday. And she was looking a little plump, but I okay. don't think, I don't I'm not I'm not banking on anything yet, so but they're together full time, you know, Matt talked about that last week um you know rhinos in particular leaving them in there because that that ovulation can be 
kind of easy to miss and it seems like it's fairly short so i keep him together full time and the male seems like he's been interested he's kind of gone off food a good bit too so i think we're heading in the right direction we'll see and then one of the corn pairs that female is gravid because i checked today uh and that is that coral ghost aztec female to the annery motley male that is undot like i don't know what hetsy has got he's just visual he's an annery motley so that'll be cool um no signs from anything else yet though but i do need to sort of go through and, and check some of them a little more thoroughly and give them a little palpation and see where we're at so but that's it so corn clutch number one on the way here soon hell yeah hell yeah brother yeah, I hope the ring calls go too, Lisa. That'll be sweet. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Thanks, Lisa. I'm hoping, man. I'm hoping. So, John, how's your your season so far? You've got a, yeah. a, lot, of, a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got I got too many irons in the fire, but no, I got a a clutch of a uh, panther chameleons. I was telling Smitty earlier, I got a clutch of those. I saw them hook up. She got nice and plump. Uh, I wish she had used her lay box, but she just scattered, dropped everything. Ah. But I was checking religiously, so I caught them, I think, pretty quickly. All right. So, real quick locality how old is mom and how many eggs? So, I have to go count exactly. I want to say it was around 20 something. Nice. Uh, Excellent. I don't know localities on them. I got uh, both of them at two different shows. The male I got at a wanting to say a columbia show a couple of years ago and he's just kind of come of age this year where he's really nice a uh, lot of really good reds and blues on him a uh, female i picked up from some people i don't think they knew what the locality was on her at a show and they were just like we're sticking to ball pythons this was a pet project it was too much and i was like oh, i'll take it off your hands yeah cool man yeah some of those things dude seeing pictures of them it's like the fact that those that it's even real. Yeah, right? It's like a cartoon. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. I like them a lot more than I've had uh veils and some other stuff, but man, my panther male, he's so friendly. I'll go in there and he's like begging. He's like a bearded dragon. He's begging to come out. I'll open it up and he's like on me. Eats out of my hand. I could take him to like education stuff. He eats right in front of the kids, big crowds of kids. I'm like, yeah, this guy's awesome if i can get babies even better the opposite of my experience when i had a veiled man that thing was oh, didn't want nothing to so do mean. with me yeah, yeah. The, the jacksons were were tolerant but the jacksons i think they were so stressed out because mm -hmm. a i was like nine or ten like my kid's age and thinking about that now i'm <laughs> it's amazing those things lived as long as they did because like i would not leave them alone sure and i know like now seeing mine at 10 i'm like i would never <laughs> get a chameleon at this age dude yeah. most, most of them are like set them and don't mess with them like yeah don't touch them don't interact with them don't do anything with them did uh did you guys when you were kids have the little the little elbow faucet dripper for your chameleon yes oh yeah the so little like, little container and it's got the little hose with the yeah well, no. Well, so like I, we they used to sell at uh at like Petco. It was like a little elbow unit with like a little spigot valve. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you take like an old butter container and just like pop a hole in the side and stuff that thing in there. And it would just nice. you'd set it to like drip like one drip every thirty seconds or whatever. And I don't know how we kept our animals alive like that. We were uh, keeping the Jacksons in a bird cage. Yeah. That's awesome. I had uh one of those little waterfalls they made. Like oh yeah hair, and then like a hairspray sprayer for my first veil i had like at a uh, college i just yeah yeah i oh, got man. to the point with the veil where i just had like a, a small ficus tree in my room like i just i was mm -hmm. like one day i was like i'm gonna not i'm not even gonna keep it in a cage we're just gonna let it keep, live in this ficus tree and that worked great for about a day and then it like started living on the curtain rod <laughs> one day we couldn't find it because at the time like my bedspread and my pillowcases were like a bunch of different kinds of lizards and stuff and this thing legit like with because there were so many lizards on it you couldn't like i laid down we couldn't find it so after like 20 minutes of looking i laid down on my bed and happened to just look over and that veil is just sitting there all puffed up 
<laughs> like, like really pissed off and yeah it just that one it didn't it didn't last long it it got That's super stressed and crazy old, but yeah oh, man yeah like, i've oh, got it i'm gonna like this and it'll work out it didn't <laughs> Yeah, I've got a uh, chameleon eggs. I've got, uh, I think I've hatched out about all the leopards that are going to hatch. I had one kind of late guy last week, and he, uh, before I went out of town this past week, and he uh, finished absorbing his yolk and moved him in with the other 2024 20, babies. Nice. So, how many, how many babies did you get this year? Leopards. Uh, Leopard tortoises for people listening. Yeah. So, they're the, yeah, the uh, uh, Stigma Kelly's Pardalis Babcocki, not the great big ones, just the yeah. average, but they're pretty. Um, this year, I'm wanting to say I got about 20, maybe nice. 22 is what I think I counted. Hell yeah. yeah he was trying to get me to take one, and I, I, and, it was not that I didn't want one, John. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to freaking put it. And maybe when uh, I have, when I have the fence built in the backyard and stuff, and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Getting out and air well, tagging I, it. I'll, t I'll tell you, man. Le yeah. Leopards are my favorite, pro probably my favorite of the tortoise tortoises. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. They're they're so cool. They're like, yeah, they're that all. They're everything. They have like that cool shape, that cool color. They get decent enough size where you're like, that's a that's a big turtle or tortoise, yeah. but it's not out of control. Right. Would you say that you could? You could keep obviously not one of the giant species, but if you you could keep one of your tortoises indoors its whole life and be perfectly fine in some kind of vivarium, it would have to be pretty big. They like okay. to move. Uh, if you did, if you had like a section of room that you just kind of cordoned off and you had some kind of flooring that you didn't mind cleaning up, yeah, I mean, it'd be fine inside, yeah, in a not super large area, they'd do okay. Nice. Yeah, so but, uh, if I was gonna do those. I'd have to. I'd have to do outdoors. Like I feel like if you're doing a tortoise like that, man, it's just be so cool to just look out, like go in the backyard and see them just out there munching on grass and doing their thing. And man, the wildest thing is watching how fast they'll start growing. You give them natural sunshine, oh, not even just grass, but you just put them outside. The babies, I'll put them outside. Just starting now during the days, I'll put them in outdoor areas. And between now and when it starts getting too cold to have them outside, they'll almost double in size. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just wild the difference that it makes. Very cool. Man. How would Very they cool. do with the winners, like adults? How would those do with the winners here? And so all the literature I read is like, oh, uh, like 60, maybe high 50s, you're okay. But they constantly surprise me. Like I'll have some catastrophe occur where like electrical go out in the middle of the night. And I'm like, oh, God, it was like yeah. 53 in their box last night. And they're fine. And I've never had respiratory problems. Um, so like mine, I have uh, basically like a cinder block doghouse I built and insulated it. And I've got a, just a little ink bird thermostat with a, a radiant heat emitters in there. And uh, it stays this uh, past year. I'd got one of your go V thermos thermometers yeah. in there so I could really keep yeah. track of it. I mean, it was staying like mid to low 70s all the time. I'd shut the door and kind of put a brick in front of it during the night. And uh, yeah, they do. I'll leave them out except when we have like freakishly cold, like sustained 2030s. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's not, that's not common. No. You know, our area. I think this past winter was the, the realest like winter we've had in a, in a while where it was consistently cold and like actually like, Oh my God, this is, this is winter and not like mm. a week of fairly chilly weather. And then back in like the sixties and seventies and then another week of, you know, forties or thirties, like it legitimately was consistently cold this, this past winter. And it wasn't for a super long, but yeah, there was like a week stretch there where I had brought mm. those and my red foots inside. I had everybody in tubs and like a bed in like my bedroom, my master bedroom <laughs> laid out with like a space heater because yeah it was like getting into the low 20s at night and i was like man I'm, i just don't trust what if electrical gfi just yeah. popped randomly in the middle of the night like that box will cool down so fast yeah yeah i don't know we're supposed to be building a fence soon we we've started getting the stuff for it to build it and like either one of those or that um those burmese black mountain tortoises reed has yeah. that, is, that was a cool tortoise they're really nice. Those also aren't diggers, which I was surprised. He told me because he yeah. keeps his outdoors, and he's like, they don't, they don't dig. Man, my my fence I use, me. I just use, uh, and a few people do this. I think I'm trying to remember. I think it may have been Ty Parks. I saw some of his enclosures with this, and I was like, 
oh, I'm going to do that. That stuff's cheap. And it just is corrugated metal roofing. And I had to oh. cut it long ways so yeah. I could step over it. And then I did the whole kind of planter box thing. And I took pallets I got for free and I like edged it with pallets. And right. it's just on the ground on like uh, uh, landscape timbers. And they don't try to dig out of it, push through it, anything. I feel like you could also do that with cinder blocks too and know where you would like put that between. I mean, I don't know how expensive cinder blocks are currently, but mm -hmm. do you like a cinder blocks with that in the in between two of them kind of going yeah. around? Or yeah, those, those pavers. Yeah, the main thing I tell people, as long as there's a visual barrier, they generally don't try to go through it. If they can't see something on the other side, they're like, oh, that's a, right. that's a wall. I can't go through it. But if it's chain link or if there's like gaps in it and they can see, they're like, oh, I, I want to get over there. The grass is green. dandelion right on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're so determined. They're just like, that's, I have to get there. You'll take them across the yard, point them in another direction. They're like instantly turned around right to that same spot. Interesting. I wonder if that has to do with burrowing too. Other species that do burrow more, if like it's because they can see the other side and they know, all right, well, I'll try and go underneath yes. it. There's like the penguins in Madagascar. Uh, uh, gopher tortoises, when I did research on them in college, it was kind of the same thing. Like they would run into downed logs and you'd be like, oh, they'll just hit it and go around. They'd be like, no, I'm going over it. I know I can do it. <laughs> and they would just spend 10, 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get over it. They'd eventually do it. You're nice. Like, Man, we were. I was What's talking about that when we were in Tallahassee and we saw those gopher tortoises. It was like, yeah. if I had one of those in my yard, dude, that thing would be living freaking high on the hog. I'd be feeding that thing all kinds of stuff. Like, that would dude, be the, awesome. the happiest, healthiest gopher tortoise in the freaking state of Florida if it were me. Like, <laughs> dude, so uh, my professor, my advisor in college, so we did research on gopher tortoises and he did a lot of endocrine studies and uh involving them getting eggs hatching them and studying all the different uh, hormonal changes through development and he had i mean it had to be hundreds of them in his yard wow. and you'd walk in out there and they would start flooding out of the burrow it's <laughs> an <laughs> army of juvenile gopher tortoises cool. yeah it was really cool and we ended up uh releasing a lot of them into some uh re uh, established habitat that had gotten purchased by another professor and they had set it up and revitalized it. And we spent, uh, I don't know, I feel like a couple of days in our herpetology class digging and putting in drift fences for these things to relocate them. That was like a test. It was like, all right, get out here and dig. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. It was, it was funny to see the different sizes of the different, you know, burrows and stuff too. Like you could tell that there was a small one that had set up shop and then like a big one mm -hmm. set up shop and, there's burrows everywhere, and they're just so cool, man. Yeah, and the Vietnamese leaf turtles, those Spengler eye, dude. Those are those are cool too. I like their eyes. They have those like crazy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> those bug the, eyes are those great. Lunatic eyes. Yeah, I think it was Anthony Pierleoni posted one of his the other day, or someone did, and they said mm -hmm. it's like a real life Muppet, and that was probably the best description uh, <laughs> I had heard. Yeah, they're pretty goofy. But you've got redfoots too? Yeah, so right now, turtle species I'm keeping. Yeah, I've got tortoise-wise, I've got the leopards, I've got redfoots, and I've got pancakes. So I've gotten a couple pancakes eggs. I have stuff in the incubator. I'm not sure if they're going to work out. They have a weird diapause that I just, for whatever reason, have just not been able to like. Just you need to talk to Tim Morris. Perfectly. Man, the Tim guy I got them from, Tim no Morris problems. Just not that long ago, man. Yeah, yeah. I know it's like I know what to do, but for like I can't. I got to get a whole other incubator set up to just do the like keep it consistent. My house is so inconsistent all over the place. The guy I got from said he would just set the eggs on a shelf in his basement for like a month, and then he'd move. Well, what's the diapod? Of course he did. Like, yeah, <laughs> the diapod length and the temperature and stuff for that. Uh, so you got to get down to I think it is like seventy six for six to ten weeks, and then slowly ramp it up to like eighty four to eighty six. Hmm. But yeah, I've like done it and like one just straight rotted. I have one that it never rotted. It it looks fine, but <laughs> I don't see veins developing. And I'm like, well, I don't, maybe it's going to happen. So I've just left it until it starts to stink. Yeah. So I'm like, eh, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know, man. 
Yeah, so I've, I'm just kind of working the kinks out. I have a little tiny uh, wine fridge. I'm getting ready to convert into another one just to hold it at that perfect with the humidity and everything at right diapause cooler temp. Very cool. Very cool. So for now, it's leopards, redfoots, and pancakes. Yeah, tortoise-wise. I do have a random Russian that uh, somebody dropped on the side of the road. And uh, another good Samaritan saw it, brought it to the vet I go to, and then they called me and they're like, hey, you want this? And I was like, sure. Yeah, I cool. like all of them. Uh, I've got a few turtle species now, uh, aquatics. I got uh, Japanese pond turtles or the Japanese wood turtles. Or, uh, uh, was it Mari Finis or something like that? Japonica. They're real cool looking. I've got a trio of those. Uh, hopefully this year or next year they'll be big enough nice. to do something. And then I bought uh, on the uh, U.S. Arc Florida auction, I got some pink bellies and golden thread turtles. Very cool. Very cool. Pink bellies are awesome, man. Oh, they're so cool. And I've kind of like waited and like been hemmed and hawed about getting some. And I saw them and I got a greenhouse this year. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to set up some big waterland tubs in there. And they'll nice. be good to go. How big are they? Oh, they're tiny. I and mean, they're like, I don't like that <laughs> big. But they're goofy. Nice. They're like set up in my living room, just swimming around in a big, uh, like cement mixing tub i got a filter and everything to set up in there real quick so i was like oh yeah this auction and i was like yeah i'm getting these that's great man that's wish great. i wish i had space for for some of them them turtles yeah my wife wishes we had more space <laughs> <laughs> stuff keeps migrating into the living room she's like Ugh. obviously she's cool with critters is she more of a turtle person lizard person Oh, turtle person. She nice. is the, my first leopard tortoise was actually hers. She oh, wanted wow. to get a tortoise and uh, we were at a uh, Tampa Bay Repticon and it was a uh, Florida turtle and tortoise breeders. Was, uh, and uh, bought it. She was wanting to get a sulcata like everybody else. And this of guy, course, of guy course. gave me the same speech I give everybody else now. And it's like, she was like, yeah, we'll do this. And so, yeah. Why is it do you think people are looking for for sulcata so so specifically? I think they see nowadays it's YouTube. People see them on YouTube or like the ladies like walking it down the street and they're like giving it baths and it's you know it's this whole person. I was like a dog. I feel so like, they're a like dog oh, is so much it's a dog. easier to manage. Oh yeah, well they don't show it like slamming through sliding glass windows. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't show that. They don't show it, show it, it in the drywall and. Yeah they, yeah, they don't. They don't show it taking a human-sized dump in the kitchen and then smearing a snail trail of feces around your living room. It's just like the Roomba, just yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. I think it also comes down to there was a famous picture. Uh, it maybe not famous. It was a viral picture on the internet of a mom sulcata with like an army oh, of babies. Yeah. The mothership kind of yeah. Thing. The mother the mothership and all the little alien flying saucers and. That I think in itself is like, oh my god, it's so cute. We have to have it. And when they're born, they're like these little golf balls, and everyone loves them. Yeah. And they just, they just don't get it, man. They don't uh, get it, it. it did help the leopard tortoise sales uh, a few years back. There's a Instagram, YouTube celebrity animal person that's got a little leopard tortoise and puts all kind of little knit outfits on it and feeds it all kind of stuff, and it hangs out with her disabled cats or something. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I was like, "Yeah, I love you, lady. You've helped me a lot." They're like, "Oh, it's a baby, whatever." I'm like, "Yeah, they're nice, great. nice." But I feel but like those are those are such a better choice, just on the the fact that they don't get so huge and like they are very attractive yeah. in terms of like pattern and color and oh you know, yeah, like what's the, I don't and the redfoots really. My redfoots are yeah. extremely friendly, like ridiculously friendly. And uh, I'll go out there, and they're all just following me around. I have a big group of them, and uh, yeah, they love me. And they'll bypass food just to get pets from me, which is bizarre nice. for nice. a reptile to me. It's like everybody just likes me because I feed them. You should make them race. Yeah, paint, I, I, paint NASCAR numbers on them or something with some I'll, like window paint. Yeah, I've thought about it. Some of the education stuff. Be like, yeah, we should do some little races. Let kids you know, get into betting early. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hook them while they're young. <laughs> yeah. Which one do you think is gonna win, kid? Bet your so now do you are yours just nondescript red foot or do you have cherry heads? Do you have you have yellow foots? What 
Um, so I've go. got a couple of cherry head females, and then everything else I have are normals. I do have one uh, female that is giant. I, I don't know what the locality is. I got her as an adoption, and uh, just huge, just double the size of everything else I have. And nice. none of the males will breed her. They're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, she too You're big. Scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, original group I got, I got from a, a old friend I've had for a long time. I worked at his pet shop in McDonough. That's no longer there. So I got a group of his red foots after he retired. He's like, I can't keep all these. Can you take them? I was like, yeah. Um, I've gotten some weird stuff out of them. I've had a, uh, I got a baby. It's not really a baby. It's a two year old now, but it looks marbled. It looks straight cherry head. Wow. The dad's not cherry head, but it's got white all between the scoots. It's hmm. real bright red head. I'm like, okay. And then uh, this year I hatched one that's got some crazy zigzaggy pattern with the uh, scoots on its back. There's some kind of deformity, but it's like extremely light in color. It has almost oh. no black on its plaster on. So I was like, really? Oh, it's going to be some kind of like, like hypo or. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, so I'm like, huh, there's something, something going on. So I'm going to hold back a few and kind of see what happens and. How early are you able to tell males and females with those, though? Uh, the red foots, um, I want to say it's about the same as the leopards. They tend to grow a little bit faster, but that kind of four years of age, three to four years, you could start telling. Okay. So it, you have to get to kind of that size that all of a sudden they'll have that look like somebody punched them in their plaster on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, you got to guess a little bit, but yeah, that's the other thing is people are always like, oh, I want a boy and a girl. And I'm like, you know, you can do temperature, uh, sex determination incubation on them, but I just put everything at 86 and hope for the best. Cause it seems fairly inaccurate or I'm just like, I don't want to guarantee any, anything to anybody as far as that. And then they're yeah. like, oh, you sold me uh, another male. And I'm like. It's not, it's imperfect unless I have like scientific grade ink. It was four years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just, I mean, I've got a, a wine cooler with heat tape and a like computer fan and, you know, a herp stack yeah. to it. It's not precision equipment. It's, it gets the job yeah. done, but. For sure. For sure. Hey, man, I've, I've missed sex stuff that I initially did. So, Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was a boy and years later it turns out to be a girl. Oh yeah. You know, it's easy to do. Yeah. That's been like my whole life. I think like my first real reptile was an iguana and it got, uh, it got named Don. Oop, I think everyone's audio cut out. I can't hear anybody. Oh, no, we're here. We're here. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Don turned into Donna after a bunch of eggs get came out of her. <laughs> nice. Nice. That that'll happen. That'll happen. Hey, I'd rather have it happen that way than put two boys together and they duke it out, you know? Oh, yeah. I've got that right now with blue tongues. I got a, uh, a blue tongue. I, I, I always end up acquiring stuff from friends or I used to do a lot of adoption and uh, rescue stuff. So I'll end up with some cool stuff and I'm like, well, I might as well get a friend for them. Yeah. Uh, but I got a blue tongue. I've had it for a few years. I use it for education shows and she's great. And I was at Daytona this past year and I was like, there's a ton of blue tongues. I'm getting one to go with. I'm pretty sure it's a girl. Let me get another one. And I got one. The guy's like, yeah, I think it's a boy, but they're so hard to tell. And uh, I've tried kind of introducing them a little bit. And I'm like, man, they go from being nice to just total jerks. Yeah, like, dude. This thing's zero to six. Sure. Oh, for man. sure. It makes me so nervous. <laughs> I'm like someone's gonna lose an arm. Are you keeping them outside too? No, I I do want to start transitioning as much stuff outside, especially with just the nice weather I have here as I can. Um, maybe eventually I'll get them outside. I've got them both. Uh, actually, right now in this room, I've converted this bedroom to my Australia room, so all my Aussie stuff is in here. Hell yeah! So I've got a couple adoption bearded dragons. I've ended up with both my blue tongues. The Ackies that were Smitties are in here. Nice. And I've got a uh, mutt carpet python and uh, my uh, male brettles. All right. Good stuff, man. How long before we produce beardies? Yeah, 
I used to do that. So that was the first thing I ever bred was bearded dragons. Oh, in nice. College. I, uh, I got some and my, uh, my roommate got one. And uh, it was funny because uh, my advisor, we had uh, picked up an ultrasound machine to do gopher tours. I was like, dude, can I, can I scan my bearded dragon? He's like, yeah. So we were like in his like dining room, ultrasounding my bearded dragon. I was like, sweet. She has eggs. This is That's awesome. great. That's great. Good stuff, man. Those things pop out a ton too, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a point in which it was just ton, and you can't keep them. Like, my tortoises, I can keep a bunch of them together, and they're fine as long as I have, like, spread out areas where they can all get to food. They're good. But, like, bearded dragons, you've, like, five together is, like, babies is max. They'll start biting arms and tails and stuff off each other. Yeah. So I don't see how those guys that produce tons of them have the space for it. And, and like i've seen some people over the years that produced hundreds a year and like they just do what you what you just said they have four or five in a tub but they've got 20 tubs 30 yeah. tubs you know yeah absolutely the light bill um, just starts getting insane with them because you got to have super intense uv you got to have the heat you got to feed them twice a day yep soak them a couple times a week yeah and i got real labor intensive with just my job and i it got to a point I had a couple get uh can't remember what the name of that disease was that went around real bad for a little while, but it would just wipe them out. And a lady had came in the pet shop with one that had it. And we were like, get the hell out of here. And uh somehow I ended up back at my house, of course, and killed of course. a couple of mine. And after that, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not getting more. And Patrick said Granada Island redfoots are huge. So yeah, I mean, maybe that's what I got. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's gigantic. I mean, she's <laughs> as big as my leopard tortoise. She's gigantic. Wow. Wow. I was like, my God. She just kept getting bigger. It's a giant loaf of bread. Yeah, she's great though. <laughs> um, you're also working with some candoya. Yeah, so I got a pair of the uh, Bibrani from a friend of mine I knew from doing wildlife rescue stuff. And uh he just wasn't interested in him anymore. And I was like, yeah, I've seen these at shows and they'll, they never eat deers eat. And he's like, yeah, they eat rodents. It's great. I was like, yeah, send them to me. So I got them. I was like, these are, these are awesome. So cool. They're amazing. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they, uh, they awesome. look awesome. I can hold them and they don't try to murder me. Uh, they have just the funniest looking face. And then they'll, uh, it's the only snake I've seen that'll change color actively like a chameleon. So yeah. they'll go from like real dark to this super light tan color. Yeah. And uh, the only problem is they, uh, they got to have two males to breed from what everything I've read. They got to have some kind of competition. Yeah, for I sure. I picked up uh, another two from underground that were imports and they look pretty good. I got them all squared away with parasites and illnesses. Just, I got to figure out what they're eating. Do you have a game plan for when you do produce what you're going to do with babies and how you're going to get them on food? That's, that's the next trick is like, like are the babies going to be weird about getting it or will they just go straight on to, Oh no, they're going to be weird. rodents. Yeah. They're yeah. going to be weird. I think once I figure out what these are eating, I'm just going to just get whatever that is and start producing them myself. Like if it's geckos, like some kind of, I think maybe morning geckos. I was looking on INAT and they have some morning geckos over in like Fiji and, Solomon Islands and Tonga. Yeah. Apparently they're all over those islands. So they're yeah, like, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. They're spotting them like all over that whole archipelago yeah. of different islands, ground skinks and such. Yeah. And you know, they might be going for those cause they spend a decent amount of time on the ground. They'll perch up like any kind of tree boa, but then I'll catch them sometimes when they're wanting to really get some extra humidity down <laughs> on the ground. Mm -hmm. all curled up and they'll actively have them on a real real tall vivarium and they'll move all the time just constantly up and down up and down nice see nice. once again inac coming in clutch yeah and For i sure. emailed uh the guy that my friend originally got him from so dm exotics i emailed him yeah. and asked what he did to get them on rodents because the two i got from my friend man they crush rodents they are like they're eager eaters. I got them cohabbed and I have to be super careful because they'll go for the same prey item for sure. Yeah. And it's all planted. So, I mean, I won't even notice like a head sticking out and I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> I didn't even see you right there. 
Yeah, I'm hoping to produce them. And I don't even know if I'll sell that many of them once I produce them. I might keep most of them back just to try to increase the well, amount. Everyone wants babies, man, as long as they're eating. That's yeah. as long as they're eating something. That's the problem is that people have babies and they lose the whole clutch just because they can never get them going. You know, yeah. it's sad. Yeah, um, I am a little concerned about that. We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I think the morning geckos are a really good start, though. Doing tiny. Yeah things and assist feed and i had a uh asian vine snake one of the ahitula persinas yeah i picked up that was grabbing when i got her and had oh, wow. nine tiny little spaghetti strings i had to assist feed uh tiny like rosy reds for <laughs> over a month and then was able to find frogs small enough for them to eat and then they would eat those nice nice you still got them or no no, I, I sold all the babies and I wish I'd kept some now because they were so cool and they I could hold them and they didn't go ballistic. And the mom, I had lost the person I was getting a, a Noles, brown and Oles from, which is the best thing for them, really, that they yeah. like to eat. And uh, I was like, that's just too much to be ordering 200 anoles at a time at the, the job I was at at the time. And I gave them to a, a vet friend of mine that likes difficult stuff, so. All right, cool. But, uh, that is one of the most yeah, interesting insane. snakes I've ever owned. Yeah, I just that thing was wild. They're really cool. I've, I've been tempted by them, you know, for for a very long time. You know, as a kid, that was a species I was really interested in. But I, you know, like so many other things, I'm at a point where I got to sort of pick and choose my battles. And yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. what it was when I got rid of her. I was like, man, I love this snake. It's like I'd walk into my reptile room and she would like instantly her head would do this. Pew, and it just lock eyes with you because they're mm -hmm. so visual and they'd look you dead in the eye and you'd just stare at me the whole time I was in there. And they stick that tongue out straight yeah. out at you. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so, so bizarre. Cool. Yeah, they're the funniest things. You got to keep them super humid too is the other thing. You got to keep the humidity way up there. They'll get stuck shed. And I had stuck shed in her a few times. And I'd have to get her in a tube and sit there and like peel away tiny yeah. little bits of stuck skin. But that's a good one if you want to learn how to mess with crazy uh, arboreal venomous stuff. <laughs> to get to get one of those because they uh, they'll come right up the hook at you. Yeah, man, they're fun. The good stuff, good stuff. What's yeah, the? Uh... Nope, go ahead. I was gonna say the only other snakes I've got right now. I've got a uh, Honduran milk snakes that hopefully next year will be big enough to breed. And then I've got uh, some Hog Island boas from Da Vinci that in a few years I'm hoping nice. to breed. Man, that's nice. another one you just I don't I don't know I don't pay attention to to boa stuff a whole lot like I used to, but it feels like hogs are just one of those ones you just don't see. Yeah, yeah, they're the uh, they're the inland carpet python of boas. Yeah, they're they're so pretty. Just their normal coloration is incredible. And uh, these ones are just, they're stunning. I saw them on the table at Daytona a couple years ago, and I was like, yeah, I kind of want these. And then they told me about, like, what this pair I got from them, would the babies would look like. They showed me, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm getting them. <laughs> so I don't think I've seen a boa from them that wasn't stellar. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and they're like so every, nice time, every time I see their stuff at Daytona or I see pictures online, I'm like, that's got to be Da Vinci. And it's, yeah, it's just ridiculous how nice their stuff is. And they had, I remember last year at Daytona in like the little acrylic tower thing they had, they had like mm -hmm. a, a completely black IMG that was just, oh my God, those IMGs do it for me, man. That's, that's, yeah, I don't know what it is, but that's yeah, such my a male, thing. my male hog island is, uh, Hypo hog IMG het for anatheristic. Wow. So I'm like, I'm hoping he has babies with the uh the female. And then I got another female from uh I think it's diamond uh diamond boas. Mm -hmm. And uh I got a uh anatheristic motley female from him, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna produce some like jet black boas. <laughs> it's the hope. Yeah, it was interesting when we had a. Uh... Pete call on he was talking about I had no idea that he was sort of the originator of the IMG thing yeah <laughs> so it was really interesting to hear that, that he story. just like randomly pulled it out of a box too didn't he, he was like yeah oh, this thing looks yeah. kind of funny and then it just shut out eventually into the super dark snake which it's it always 
blows my mind how so many of the morphs we have come out of situations like that. Like reading this Sandboa book and seeing that pretty much all the Kenyan morphs that are out there were from imports that just showed up and they were like, oh yeah, we found an albino. Oh yeah, here's one, the one that looks, you know, from a certain locality that's like crazy red, you know, just... Yeah, and then people just latched onto that and pursued it, and it's just wild. Yeah, yeah, people took the initial risk, man. They put the they put the money up or grabbed something and went for it. Mm -hmm. And for those listening at home, IMG is increased melanin something, right? What is it? Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, so it's weird. So it doesn't when they're babies, like they have a little bit darker and they're speckled, but then as they shed continually, it gets darker and darker and darker and darker as they. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like adult. calico. As it gets older, the more pattern change you get. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty weird, but it uh, ends up getting that nice, like super glossy iridescent black. Oh yeah. Actually, I think it's in, increased melanin gene. Is that what it is? I am. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, something about that just giant big black snake that's appealing. Sure. Well, sure. even the even the <laughs> combos that it gets plugged into. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm at a point now where I see that stuff and I'm like, that must have IMG in it. And I'll, you know, I'll read it and be like, oh, look at that! It does. You know, it's it's yeah. just cool that that's such a unique gene that you can you can pick it out of a lineup. You know. Mm -hmm. And it just looks awesome. Like you put it with yeah. it, it looks great. Yeah. And that's kind of where I like the projects of different things I work on. It's kind of, I'll see stuff online or I'll see something at a show and I'll say, Oh, that's like really interesting. I'll do some research on it. I'll look into, I've looked at hog islands forever and uh, eventually I just pulled the trigger on them. Like, it's just something I think is cool. I want to have it in my collection. If I'm going to have it, I feel like I should kind of breed it and put more out into the world and kind of subsidize just my insane spending that I do. <laughs> so it's my justification to my wife that I could be like, well, if yeah. your shoes reproduce, you could have more shoes. So I have to reproduce some of the <laughs> stuff I have. Mine is sitting here next to me looking at me when you say these things. Yeah. <laughs> my wife has been very supportive and good because I just formed uh my LLC last year. So I like was like, this is legit. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to the shows. I changed my like nine to five job. I've kind of poured myself wholly into it now. What's that, that process been like, like how was the whole LLC thing? I mean, it's going to change vary from, from state yeah. to state, but I mean, what was your experience like with that? Advertisers make it seem difficult and it's not, you'll okay. get all this stuff. You'd like, you'll see like ads be like, Oh, let us help you. Could yeah, like legal stuff just like that. The confusion. Yeah, you just you just go to your state and you go go to like the secretary of state. You're like file LLC. You put your information in. They're like, all right, here's your fifty dollar fee, and that's it. You have to do that. You have to. It, the only that's like confusing. EIN you do all these things stuff. like separately. Yeah, so you do the LLC, but then you have to go do the EIN separately, and you have to do your tax, your sales tax numbers separately. And then you have to do, uh, so like Georgia, you have to do a pet dealer's license then separately. And then in my county, I had to have a business permit. And that mm -hmm. was a little weird, but the people were cool about it. I had, they were like, well, you can't have the pet dealer license till you have the business license. And they're like, well, you can't have the business license till we know you can sell the pets. And I was like, <laughs> they're like, we'll give you a provisional license. So he'll come do the inspection. What about insurance? Katie just asked. Uh, you know what? I need to do insurance. I haven't done any insurance. I probably should. Um, you know, Which of what? General liability? Yeah, general liability. Yeah. And it's, it's not that much. It's just like, I don't know. I'm lazy. and just so many moving parts. So much. Not really lazy. I just have like so many other things going on. I'm like, eh, spending time on the computer. I'll do that later at night. I need to go feed and mist and clean and make sure everybody's good. And then, you know. I get my kid in bed and it's like nine thirty at night and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. doing insurance stuff right now. <laughs> yeah, because Legal Zoom, like they advertise that they they'll do it for like three hundred bucks and it's like one and done kind of thing. And <sighs> I, I mean, think they, they use that whole like it's it's complicated, but yeah. we'll help you kind of thing. And 
dude and what's a lot of that stuff is, is complicated because i've i've looked into it for palmetto coast stuff in the past and yeah. like all stuff and it's like finding out exactly whether like a dba or an llc or you know s core whatever like it was so hard to find just very plain english cut mm -hmm. and dry like this is what you need to do yeah like it was everything was just so vague yeah it was really frustrating yeah, that that's the problem. And they sell, they like pseudo sell your info too. So when you do the LLC through their secretary of state, which I just did sole proprietorship LLC. So I don't have employees. I'm the only right. person. Um, so it's kind of the simplest way and it kind of covers you on liability to a degree. So someone can't come after me personally. They could just go after my business, which is worth nothing. They just end up with a bunch force of people. Yeah, they would just be like, oh, you, you want to sue for tortoises. Okay. Um, so that's the way to do it. But once you do it, you just get bombarded with emails and physical mail with, let us help you do your taxes. Let us help you do your LLC. And it's like, I did all my stuff on TurboTax this year. And honestly, I was stressed out about it. And I was like, oh, that really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. But are you doing, you have to file like monthly? South Carolina, don't you have to put it in monthly? Yeah, it's a kind of a nice little system with sales tax for Georgia. You just go onto their website and they're like, oh, you you owe these months. Click on them, put in what your sales was, tax you collected, and then you could pay with a card right there when it's yeah. over. It's pretty painless. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they want to they want to do that kind of thing. But, you know, again, because of like the vagueness of a lot of that information mm -hmm. and there being so many moving parts and a lot of minutia and stuff that people are afraid like they'll miss something and then all of a sudden the irs is coming for them because they forgot to yeah. plug in a certain number in this little form and like well, it is very it's overwhelming like it's it's intimidating it's not necessarily overwhelming but it is like yeah it freaks you out you're doing it right and that was my biggest thing reading it was like how do i know if i'm if i'm doing this correctly and that's why legal zoom was like hey we'll do it for you for three hundred dollars you know like it's tempting but yeah my advice to people is if you're gonna be small you're just you're, you're like mine is like i mean i don't think this is gonna become uh underground reptiles well, i'm not gonna have like 50 60 employees um it's gonna be just me if that time comes around i'll file a whole new thing but just do sole proprietorship llc you file it through your state and then you just apply, do everything through the government websites. Don't do the secondary ones. And it, the, the language is super confusing, but you're just okay. like, I just need my tax ID. I need my sales tax ID and whatever your local county state regulations are as far as like, so Georgia, like pet dealer. The only reason I even applied for it is it was like, it's kind of vague. It's all dog related, really. So it's like litters over this size. So if you have more than five litters, you have to have a pet dealer license. I'm like, what is, I don't know, what is a litter of tortoises? So <laughs> I was just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm selling enough now that I feel like I should probably be on the up and up. So yeah. just, well, yeah, that's also one of those things too, where if you call that office and you're like, I'm not breeding dogs, what do I do? They're going to be like, we don't know. Like, no, they don't. And, <laughs> and they, honestly, they kind of, to a degree are like minimal caring. Like as long as you're right, it's not cats and it's not dogs, whatever, dude. Yeah. As long as you're not like, yeah. you know, just keeping stuff disgustingly and you're not just selling bonkers amounts of stuff. You know, if you want to go to the shows, you have to have the, the permit is like the other yeah. thing. Like I if think you want to go to expos, you got to have the permit. It's also a way to, to eliminate or try to decrease, maybe not say eliminate, but the roadside vendor with the, you know, baby turtles and death cups and you know coming out of a panel van on the side of 202 you know what i mean like that, i had that, a yeah i had a 200 readier sliders get to me through oatland island the police savannah police arrested a man with a briefcase full of Jesus. 200 readier sliders and a briefcase yep. yep yeah so that happened once what was he gonna do i, don't, I guess sell them on the side of the road i don't yeah. know I mean, I remember being a kid down here in Florida, you'd go in a gas station and they would have a 55 gallon fish tank with like a, you know, air, uh, what do you call it? Air stone bubbler, yep. like mm -hmm. no filter, just air stone bubbler. And they it would just be filled to the brim with baby red sliders. 
and it was like if you buy the Raider slider for 1995 you got this little you get a island pickle. no you got an island lagoon and it was a plastic yep. it was a plastic no lid tub with a palm tree in it and they give you a little packet of pellets and yep. that's it was the turtle death cup you know yep. palm tree is for enrichment exactly yeah. i tell you it grows to the size of the cage yeah exactly exactly and people still do that which is wild because technically there's a fda law you can't sell anything under four yeah. inches, which kills me that's been in place for a long time too like that's what i'll there's a, there was a the shop on Hidden head that was selling turtles that and i'm i just always remember walking in and seeing that and being like i thought this was illegal yeah, and there's like a bunch of like weird workaround and some states don't enforce it because it's really silly. So it was based on there was salmonella outbreak that got traced back to all those baby red ear sliders. You're putting turtles in their mouths. For yeah, and I'm like, you know, I don't know. And just baiting chickens, people putting eggs, you know, in their mouth. I don't know. Everybody has chicken in their backyard now. What are we talking about? There was a yeah. pica epidemic or something with that generation. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, and it, it stinks for some of the really rare tortoise species I've kind of stayed away from, or some of the ones that are better pets, like Hermans. I'm going to start getting into them and kind of feeling that out. But there's, I mean, they're barely over four inches as adults. I mean, really big ones are decent, but I mean, it's like, how many years is it going to take to to be able to sell a baby? You know, and they're really yeah. better pets because they don't get colossal. They have great personalities. You can leave them outside in most of the United States for yeah. the whole year. Yeah. You know, and they do fine. They don't dig. They're they're friendly. It's like they're great pets, but, you know, kid, God, because one kid could put it in their mouth. Yeah. More people <laughs> in a year. Yeah. There was a study. More people in a year get salmonella from the grocery store than all animals combined. I work in food service, and I mean, if you're eating at restaurants, you're taking your life in your hand every time. <laughs> like, just FYI, <laughs> like, ignorance is bliss, dude. Because like, I think about yeah. that all the time, and I'm like, I don't even want to know what's going on back there. I've... Yeah, a lot of places you don't, and it's wild. It's I mean, really bad. You watch Kitchen Nightmares enough, and you're like, I bet a solid like eight out of the ten restaurants I eat at look just like this before Gordon Ramsay walks in and starts. In places bed. you wouldn't even think too, like some like pretty swanky places that are real real popular i'm not going to name any names because i like the people but yeah i've been in some places where i was like i went home and told my wife i was like we're never we're never eating there she's like you work my there i'm like we are never yeah <laughs> my, my brother-in-law worked for a, a liquor distributor for a while and so he was in the back of a lot of local restaurants and he mm. always told me which ones to avoid because he's like dude <laughs> it's bad yeah yeah well and so yeah it's like you see some rules and it's a little like all right like at a point you have to let people you know fend for themselves like you can't protect people from themselves to only a certain extent you can just help hope the microwave uh kills off the bacteria before it gets to you the e coli and stuff well don't put your turtle in the microwave though yeah <laughs> Well, my whole thing was working in pet shops is the mom kid wants a turtle mom's all oh but they have disease and they give you salmonella and we would say yeah. you know ma'am you're if you take your child and let it swim in a kiddie pool of its own feces for a week it will too have salmonella just clean your turtle tank have a filter you know what i mean they just couldn't wrap their head around that that's because people don't understand like they don't understand microbes for the most part. I mean, look at the use of hand sanitizers and just all the insane. You, know, you have strep all inside your mouth all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's just part of your, your life. You have all these bacteria all the time, all over you, and there's no getting around it. Yeah. You know, my kid, you know, my kids now, he'll be five. Uh, I always tell people this when they're asking me that kind of same thing. I said, well, when he was about, he wasn't even talking yet. He was maybe two. Maybe, maybe one and a half. I was feeding uh, my redfoot tortoises and I had them out there with me and he would help me. And um, they eat all this fruit and he loves fruit. So I'm putting all this stuff down. I'm like, don't eat this. This is for the tortoises. I turned my back for a second and the tortoises <laughs> were all there eating. I turned around. He's right down there with them. Nice. Just nice. Eat putting everything in his mouth and i'm like well i mean i've become one of them i mean they've walked all over at this point i mean yeah. i know they had smeared some level of feces into there at a point it's just inevitable and i'm like oh. well, either builds, get sick or he won't <laughs> yeah it builds a hell of an immune system you yeah know? you never got sick you know? yeah our, our our generation played outside that's why we don't get as sick as the younger ones do who knows yeah my kid's been exposed to every every kind of animal everything i've just thrown Super everything immune. out yeah 
Yeah, you know, he doesn't get he doesn't get very sick. I, I was, you know, knock on wood the other day. I was like, man, he hadn't been really sick in like over a year. Like, yeah. That's impressive for a child. That's hey, that's that that good immune system chowing down with the tortoises. Yeah. Because you're not a member of the pathogen of the week club with your local elementary school. <laughs> it was the daycare that got me, man. When yeah. I first put him in daycare, he uh he had a point gave me hand, foot, and mouth disease. Oh, pretty, oh uh, Jesus. Awful. It was just on my feet, but it felt like someone had taken a cigarette and burned little burns on oh, the bottom God. of my feet. Oh, man. I don't understand. Maybe it's because I don't have kids, but there is a particular smell that I would say some middle schools and below. Every elementary school has the smell. Every pre-K, every kindergarten, they all have this unique just it's if if a layer of filth had a smell do you, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, like daycare it, definitely. If biofilm it, had a smell. Yeah, no, that's what it's, it's the film. Like I imagine everything just has a clear film on it, and that's what this. That's what I'm smelling. Yeah. But like when I go to vote, my local polling place is in the elementary <laughs> school. Like that. <laughs> and like, dude, the best time ever was when we were had COVID and like you know everyone's wearing a mask because I could. I it it, it gives like me the politics. ick. It gives me the skeeve to like go in an elementary school now. I don't know why. It's I, don't that I smell the film. Yeah. yeah. My reptiles, I think, are way cleaner than most people's children. Legit, man. Legit. It's like I've I've never gotten <clears throat> sick from anything. Like I animal either. related. I, I yeah. Just, this yeah. Never happened. I've, I've been. I mean, I've had stuff since I'm sure, like y'all, since I was a little kid. I've been. Yeah. People keep telling me that I'm going to get salmonella from cookie dough, and I'm like, I'm still waiting for that to happen. Like, uh, no, you 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 will never, never get happen. salmonella. You'll no. get it from a raw tomato from the grocery store, though. Yeah, all the times I've gotten sick is uh, restaurants eating at really? places. Two both times I had food poisoning that was real bad was uh, Asian restaurants, unfortunately, because I love Asian mm -hmm. food. Jeez. I'm so paranoid about that stuff, man. I just try. Yeah. To it. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die one time. I was like, man, I was out for like three days. I didn't eat anything for three days. Oh, just drink Gatorades. Oh, jeez, <laughs> it's rough. That was bad. But uh, no, I mean, I think I don't know. I think reptiles are way cleaner than dogs and cats. I love all animals. I've kept all kinds of animals. My uncle was a vet. I'm like, man, reptiles are clean. They're nice. They're easy. It's one of the reasons I love them. I go on vacation. It's like my snakes are good. I'm like yep. the guy that watches my house, I'm like, snakes are cool, dude. You don't have to even like worry about them. It's the yeah. And really, the tortoises, adults are pretty good because they live outside. They just eat whatever's growing. Do they keep their their lawn fairly well kept? Oh yeah, yeah. The leopard, the redfoots, and the leopards are pretty intense. If you want to grow stuff in there with them, you've got to like warden it off till it gets to a substantial size, or they'll yeah. they'll murder it. Uh, my redfoots killed elephant grass, which I didn't think was possible. Wow. Um, and my leopard killed a prickly pear, spineless prickly pear cactus. I planted one, and just every time it put new growth, it just ate it instantly. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. And so eventually, I guess the plants just ran out of energy. <laughs> it just stopped I putting out. New yeah. I'm done. No, it was just a war of attrition against the cactus. So I grow stuff in there with them, but I uh, I have to like put little cages around it and then I'll clip ins into where they, uh, where they are and they'll eat it. Uh, with the, the shows and stuff that you've been, you've been bending, you know, aside from like the sulcatas and stuff, what have people been asking for? Um, I've had a few like, people ask for aquatics, um, which is bizarre to me too. Cause I'm like, I love aquatic. I love all turtles. I love all reptiles. Honestly, I think aquatics are super cool, but, so again, it's like, okay, well, you got to buy a big yeah. aquarium. You got to buy a filter. You got to buy the hose to siphon out water to do water changes. You got to buy gravel. You got to buy log. Like, it's just way more expensive. And I'm like, okay, like, that's fine. But are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? Like, I mean, this this thing, yeah, I mean, I, they're pretty simple setups for the torches that I kind of advertise. I keep my babies in basically the big cement mixing tubs from Lowe's. And I've built a rack system for them. Actually, I just was like looking at my uh, my rack, reading rack. rack. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I could space this out and put 
UVB and, and heat bulbs and this Hell would work yeah. perfect because yeah, you know, it works great. I do a deeper substrate layer in there and they could kind of get a little humidity. I'll do them bioactive and put isopods in there and they help keep it clean. And what substrate are you using in that? Um, I'll do a mix of cypress and the cocoa, okay. cocoa bark, uh, and I'll throw, uh, 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 peat moss in there and some of the cocoa, just ground up cocoa base. So I'll do like a mix of bigger stuff and then finer stuff. Mm -hmm. The red foots, I'll put in a bunch of sphagnum as well. And, uh, that seems to work good. The babies, you want to keep them more humid. There was a, someone did a study or they kept all these different tortoises at a higher humidity level as juveniles and babies. And it helped a lot with the pyramiding. So I've really converted to trying to keep that humidity much higher even for leopards which are semi-arid and uh yeah it really helps with the pyramid and they come out much smoother so why are you just like is that misting them or is that giving them like a humid sort of corner or end or what's the yeah having that deeper substrate so it can have some humidity down in the soil and i'll keep some hides and they'll kind of burrow down into that soil a little <laughs> bit they'll kind of like they'll just have like the top of their shell right. sitting out and I'll miss them, uh, you know, once every other day or so, every day for the redfoots. And uh, I'll soak them once a week in just a tub of water, just shallow room temperature water. And I'll soak them in that just to get a drink. And I keep water bowls with them, but they, they'll they use them. But it's hard to know who's drinking when. So just a good soak every week mm -hmm. is good. You find that they, they usually, you know, drop a BM when they soak? Oh, yeah. Religiously. Yep. Yeah, soaking and then moving to somewhere, tortoises are guaranteed to poop. Yeah. That's like their go-to. Yeah, my mom has um, uh, Specs hingebacks. And uh, those are so cool. She soaks them in the mop sink once a week, and uh, she'll let them soak, wait for them to both poop, then drain it, wash them off, and soak them again, you know? Yeah. So... And they're a more foresty species, so, I mean, you got to think where they're living at. They're going to have that microclimate, and there's been a lot of stuff on this. Even the arid stuff, they're getting in the bottoms and root balls of these plants, and humidity levels, 80% humidity, and you're like, oh. That's, yeah. That's incredible. Just, just under the surface, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. about the pyramiding thing, too, because I think last time we had... Peter Leone or Dumas, I think it was Dumas when we had him on, he would, he had mentioned that because I had asked him and I was, I don't know exactly what the, like how that would cause the, the pyramiding. Yeah, you that, know, that was I like the last thing I thought it would be because I always figured it was like a, a metabolic thing with, you know, UV and D3 and stuff like that. Yeah, I think most people do. Yeah, and it's, it's the, That was the, yeah, that was the prevailing theory and I think it's probably as in most things, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, especially with the leopards and their diet. Zoomed has a uh, shout out to them. They have a great uh, grassland tortoise diet. I think it's the best one on the market. I haven't yeah. tried. Uh, uh, Lugardi has a similar one. It, I don't li I've looked at their composition and I don't like it as much as I like what's in the Zoomed's one. But yeah, you soak it in water and they'll actually eat it. Like the the big pellets, the Missouri, it's hard mm -hmm. to feed babies that stuff. It's like a giant pellet. The adults will eat it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fine for the redfoots. It's not as great for the leopards, but they have to have such a high fiber diet because yeah. they're in African savannah. They're just eating like yeah. grass. That's, That's all they're eating is fiber. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super low nutritional density. So with them, it's like pseudo starve them to a degree because if you feed them too much, they grow faster than they should. And that adds to that pyramiding. So you're trying to not load them up on like really healthy stuff it's kind of opposite of what you think with nutrition they're like oh eat the most nutritionally dense things it's them it's like we'll give them some of that but mostly fiber yeah, yeah. and uh that seems to help as well as the uh the water and uh, some of my stuff will get a, a degree of it and i don't know anyone that's produced super totally smooth leopards in captivity for whatever reason they just they tend to just pyramid in captivity the uh, the company is it Luzari? Is that what it is? Yeah, Lugardi. Yeah, Lugardi, they've got Lugardi. a few different. They have a crested gecko diet, and they have a tortoise one. And I've I've got a, a account with them, but I have to give them a check to get like really. A yeah, they don't so, do credit card. I was like, oh. I watched a video of a guy, and I don't know where he was located, but it seemed cool, colder than. 
probably rightfully should be for tortoises, but huh. it basically is like his morning routine. And like he like wakes up and like makes a cup of coffee and he walks out to this field and he has a like a 50 pound bag of the lucid Lugardi. Mm hmm. And he tears the top open. You think he's going to feed like pigs or cattle or something. And he just starts walking around. He just dumps piles of this stuff in this field. Yeah. And 50, 60 tortoises come out of nowhere. All yeah. different species. And they're all just chowing down this giant field. And I'm like, he's got to be like some kind of tortoise so farmer freaking. or something. And <laughs> I just thought it was amazing that the dude's got to be going through one of those 50 bags every two or three days. Easy. Yeah. And uh, I'd never seen anything like that before. I thought it was crazy. I didn't know if you had similar feed bags for your tortoise army. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wish I could get the 50-pound bags of the Zoomed stuff. I do make a 50-pound bag, but I buy right. the uh, whatever the biggest one I can get off of Chewy or Amazon. And uh, I'll soak it beforehand. It seems to be more palatable. You can, yeah. They say you can give it to them dry, but I'm like... Yeah. You know, I kind of soak it up, especially with the babies, and I'll mix it into their stuff so they have almost no choice but to consume it. Because, like with every, you know, with even humans, you'd rather eat the really tasty good stuff than of the course. kind of shitty stuff. So I kind of force it on them, and as they get older and be able to put them outside, it's, then you can offer them like stuff you've grown, and I'll buy uh, different seed blends that uh, simulate and represent some of those African grasses and grow that stuff and feed it to them uh mulberries i planted mulberry trees specifically to feed my tortoises really oh nice the berries are like a great byproduct for me but the leaves are fantastic for uh the redfoots and the leopards all when i all prune it every year and just throw the whole branch into the enclosures with my adults and they just love it that's awesome that's super cool are you doing any proteins like i've seen people i've seen redfoots go ham on like dead mice yeah, redfoots for sure. So all the forest guys, and you know, box turtles, forest turtles are, will do this as well. And they're even more active hunters. But all the forest turtles, so the Burmese, like you were saying, the brown and the black mm -hmm. mountain tortoises. I'm not sure if the Conixus group will do it, but they are kind of a foresty s tortoise. I think, uh, I think like Homiana, I yeah. think has been known to, but like, I, I don't, I haven't tried it with my mom's spec eye, but I'm pretty sure. Homiana, like if you gave them live pinkies, they'll just like scarf them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those for what how it was explained to me was basically is they're in so much canopy cover, they're not getting yeah. much vitamin D. So they're getting yeah. animal protein. And uh the red foots, they'll scavenge. I have to one of the things that kind of grossed me out that they would do is if my dogs could get in the same area as them, they would eat dog poop religiously. Really? Oh, yeah, they'd go ham for a dog turd. They wow. just all, yeah, which grossed me out every time I saw them doing it. So I was like, I cannot have the dogs in here. Yeah, but I'll do. Uh, I do uh, fancy feast. I, oh, like all a right. Liver, a liver and heart one. And it's yeah. like the first two ingredients are like chicken livers and chicken hearts, and I was like, yeah, that's perfect. And I'll give them that, you know, a couple times, few times a month, and uh, they they'll go crazy for it. They love that stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, Patrick said that uh, Conixus eat a lot of centipedes and earthworms in the wild. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I've offered some insects to the Redfoots, and it's not that I don't think they eat it. They just they don't have that like hunting mentality. They'll like like go to go for it. They're just so kind of like chill and slow that it's just like it doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it from a like a biological standpoint it makes sense that it's easier to find something like carrion or something that's already sort of there and not moving and you know oh, i yeah. see them filling i see them filling like a almost like a a vulture like niche sure when it comes to that yeah and one thing that's kind of nice about them too is i mean if you think about their ecology and what they're doing in the wild they're eating the fruit that other animals have eaten partially off of and dropped or stuff that's rotting on the forest floor. So like all the produce that's on sale, like fruit that's on sales is about to go bad. I'm like, yeah, give it to me. Like mangoes that are like nearly gone. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to throw that whole thing out there. Cause that's what they're eating in the wild. Um, yeah, I do a lot of mango papaya. That's probably where most of my money goes to is just buying tropical fruits like that. Cause it's so good for them and they love it. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get friendly with one of your grocers and be like, look, man, if every tuesday you throw out produce like yeah. you know i'll give you a 50 cents on the dollar for the rotten stuff you know yeah 
Yeah, fruit. I'll, I'll do it. The lettuce. I try not to do it with. I'll buy. Uh, I'll buy some some pretty good lettuce. A lot of collard greens. I try to grow stuff like I grow like Swiss chard and dandelions. I, I'll just let all my dandelions go crazy. My parents say it. My dad has to say something to me every time he comes over. He's like, "Go a lot of dandelions." I'm like, "Yeah, it's for the children. It's, it's food." It's how free. do you how do you <laughs> harvest your dandelions? I'll just go and grab a whole bunch and just throw them. Oh, okay. okay. So the, the you're there. not you're not like trimming the entire yard and saving the tops. <laughs> no, I mean I will intentionally let them like go to seed, and I'm like, yeah, kid, go out there and blow all those dandelions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it, so I'm like, yeah, do that. <laughs> so yeah, I just I'm like I let dandelions go crazy, and I've planted seeded dandelions and like planted boxes, and I'll just cut leaves off of it in there for them to eat. Nice. That's cool, man. I prickly, like the spineless prickly pear. I I bought some more recently, but yeah, I'll grow it and cut pads off and throw it in with them. They love that stuff. Nice, very cool. And the redfoots, I feel like eat will pretty much eat anything. They'll they'll annihilate yeah. any kind of produce. The yeah. the lepers, I try to keep them on a stricter diet. Uh, a lot of squash too. I'll do a butternut squash and I'll run it through a food processor, and they love that stuff. Everything I have loves that stuff. All my herbivores, my rhino iguana goes crazy for it. My uh, hydrosaur love it, which is weird to me, but I'm like, whatever. That's cool. Yeah, rhino iguanas are neat, man. Yeah, I think that's a perfect segue to talk about your lizards. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I'm not breeding any lizards uh, currently. Uh, hopefully, the Ackies I got from Justin will produce eggs eventually. But uh, I've got the Ackies, I've got two hydrosaur. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Weber eye that I got from my friend that had the pet store that he just had them and didn't want to take care of them anymore. So I have them set up in one of those like massive uh, vision cages, like the biggest vision they make. Nice. Nice. And they're cool to look at. It's just like crazy looking dinosaur lizard. Yeah. Um, yeah I've got the blue tongues. Uh, I got a bunch of crested geckos. And uh, recently the things I'm hoping to produce, I picked up from a, Really nice fella that is from California that moved to Georgia recently. I picked up the, uh, I got to look up the scientific name here. Make sure I get it right. Da, 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 da. The uh, Tachydromus smar smaragdinus. They're like those Japanese grass lizards. They have the super long tail. Picked up a group of those. I love those things. Very cool. Uh, picked up uh, some Manola small wood eye from him as well. I'm hoping to breed and those things. That's are cool. Just killer. Yeah, I yeah. saw him at his table at the last show and I was like, it was like an Augusta. And I was like, dude, what, where, <laughs> where did you come from with the cool lizards? He had insane stuff, all kind of great gecko species. Nice. So, and uh, just to go back real quick, how big are your cell phones? Uh, they're adults. They're not the giant hydrosaur. The Philippine yeah. ones or the, uh, I guess the Celebonensis are really big too. Right. Um, from like nose to start a tail, they're probably about a foot and a half, two foot. I mean, they got a big old long tail. Um, one of them, I don't know what happened to him. The guy had him. He's all, he's kind of jacked up, but he's the friendliest one. His arms have some issues. I think he broke some, broke some stuff. They're so flighty. When you get them as babies, they just, yeah. You don't have them in a giant enclosure with a ton of cover. They just beat themselves up. But uh, there's one that's, for the most part, intact, and he's pretty impressive looking, but he doesn't like me. So I, I don't interact with him a whole, whole bunch. I'll kind of keep them, have a huge water bowl, and I look at them and miss them and nice. feed them. And I don't, I don't, I mess with the little disabled guy because he's friendly. He can't get away from me quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa asked if the, the guy from California is Ian Polka. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that guy, man, his stuff rocks. He's a cool guy. Him and his wife were super nice. They got some tortoises from me. And I was like, I got to get some of these lizards. They're incredible. Very How cool. big do those get? Uh, the the uh, little grass lizards are small. I mean, they're like, sm like body size. Try to think of what you would even compare that to. They're smaller than an anolis. They're smaller than green anolis, okay. but their tail is like almost a foot long. It's ridiculous yeah. how long their tail is. It's triple their size, length of their body, hmm. but they're like this great kind of emerald turquoise green color, and their tongues are uh, forked. They look like tiny little green tree monitors 
almost. Uh, and they're super brave. They'll come right out on your arm. They don't like go ballistic. They'll go like, you know, right back into the cage, but they'll eat uh, crickets and they'll eat the Crested Gecko stuff. The uh, nice. for Pashi. But yeah, they'll like uh, mission impossible down with their tails to grab crickets. They'll like zip line down and then they'll pull themselves back up. It's the wildest. That's thing. so cool, man. Yeah. So cool. They do great in a community. And I've wanted to have some kind of community lizard for a while. I looked at some of the parthenogenic uh, desert, little pygmy desert geckos. And all the ones were always import and they looked bad. And I was like, ah, I, just, I don't want to get a bunch of tiny things that are all going to die on me or have problems. Yeah. They're so small. And I kind of just waited. I've seen some of these online a little bit. And I'm like, man, that's a really cool lizard you could have a community tank with. And then that guy had them. And I was like, I have to get these. They're incredible. Nice. Is it, you cool, said man. it was Tachydromus? Yeah, Tachydromus. And then it's uh, Smaragdinus. Yeah, that's a cool genus. I didn't realize that was. Yeah, they, they got some neat stuff. They always reminded me of like a hybrid between a null and a plated lizard. Yeah, yeah, they got that kind of plated lizard skeleton on them. Yeah. Oh, those are really cool. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. They look like little emeralds. They're great, and then they're just so charismatic and sit out and like they're you can see them and they're doing things and they don't try to kill each other. And I was like, this is great. This is perfect. Let me pull up a picture for the people. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, go for it. And what yeah, kind of setup cool. do you have them in? Um, so they're getting one of those black box cages that's coming in. I got one of their vertical, uh, I think it's like 18 by 18 by 24. Oh, uh, one of the bio G's. Yep. And right now they're just in, that'll, those will be, that'll be good for them. They're, they're in, uh, one of those exoterra. I think it's like 12 by 12 by 18s and they do okay in it, but I definitely want to give them some more space. But, uh, they haven't had any issues. Uh, the humidity seems good with them. Uh, they don't need like a crazy basking spot from what he told me. They just, uh, yeah, it's kind of warm enough in my uh, building for them. But uh, yeah, they're just watching them run around is the coolest thing. They're so fun. Once you see them doing their thing, you're like, oh yeah, that's going to spend yeah, hours man. watching these things. Super they, cool. They're kind of, they remind me a lot of the, uh, there's another lizard. It's the uh, there's something Persina. They're like people compare them a lot to uh, yeah. monitors, but they're not. They uh, remind me of those, but real small, like keeled lizards or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that yeah. lateral line. That lateral line is awesome. Yeah, and the males seem to be a little bit browner, which is bizarre. The males are more drab, and the females are just like stupid green. Now, those pictures almost don't even do them justice. Look, the color, it's like out of this world. Those are neat. Yeah, and that's like the size of them, like full grown. And apparently they won't eat their babies from what uh, Ian told me either. He said, yeah, they'll just, you'll just see a spot, like a leaf that's like getting pooped on a lot. And you're like, oh, there's a baby in there. And they just like find a singular like hangout spot. Wow. That tail like, is wild, they're, man. They're live bears. Uh, they'll lay eggs, but he said you can just let them hatch in the cage. You know, okay. gotcha. they won't they won't eat their babies like you know everything else does. Which so is what are they yeah, just eating like pinheads or something? Uh, I've been feeding them like uh, eighth inch crickets. So like that that picture on the on I guess it's like my left. It's on that middle row there. That one is like kind of his full body. That's the color that they kind of are. Is that turquoisey green? Yeah, that thing. That's that's pretty close to what they look like. The ones I have, they're like sea foamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they uh are definitely, almost almost Tiffany blue. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty uh excited to get my hands on those, and they've been just rocking. They've been just doing great. Yeah, I got those, and then I was excited to see he had those Anola small wood eye. And I wasn't even looking for anything like that. And uh, mm -hmm. I just was like, man, I never see these available. And it's, I, I don't know. I feel like that's a part of the herpetoculture that's starting to grow more as people are getting into the more into some of these, <clears throat> some of these anoles. Yeah. And that's, I don't know. I think it's the prettiest one there is. Or one yeah. of it's that. Big, is a, charismatic is a rabbit, blue. Man. 
Oh yeah. There's a lot of super cool ones and some of them are harder to keep than others. These guys are pretty easy. They're, they're, they're not trying, they're doing good in a group. They're uh, eating good for me. They're uh, chiller right now than uh, Cuban night and Oles. Not as chill as I also have some of the uh, those Cuban faults chameleons or the bearded mm -hmm. anoles. Those guys yeah. are real chill. Yeah. And I got some. I'd gotten uh, four of them, and I just got them to sell from underground. And I was like, I'll just get some stuff to have on the table so it's not just tortoises. And uh, I was like, I'll have them for a few months just to make sure they're they're good and they're eating. I don't want to. I don't kind of like to sell stuff to people where I'm like, I have no idea how it's going to do. Yeah. Um, I was kind of like, I don't want to sell these. I took, them, <laughs> I took them to the show with me and I sold one and I was like, I'm just keeping the rest of the, these other three are mine. They're staying with me. Nice. They're so relaxed. And now I'm like, well, I'm just going to be a lizard and tortoise guy now. Cause I got all these lizards. Having like larger species like that of anolis just seems so foreign to me, given that we have the, the greens here. It's so well, odd to think that there's there's other species uh, in that group that are so much more colorful and bigger and because we had an episode where we went down the rabbit hole with this Anolis mm -hmm. animals website that's just literally an entire website just about Anolis. Yeah, and you get down to the Caribbean and the and uh you know Central and South America and you see some of theirs and you're like, dude, that's that's breathtaking. Uh, and I was in Jamaica for a friend's wedding. They had some that were just insane looking. I don't even know what species that was, but they were like rainbow colored. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to catch one so bad. Those people thought I was a lunatic. I was like stalking <laughs> around their like super nice resort, like trying to catch lizards. Yeah. This website's neat. Yeah, that is oh, cool. Yeah, good at mating and eggling behavior in a little small woody. Yeah, I'm going to look that one up. That's cool. Yeah, I'd always just seen pictures of them, and I'd seen videos where people had them, and I've never seen them available. When he had them available, I was just like, I'm getting them. I got I got a setup for the kind of semi-tropical I have. Trying to do some smaller stuff to, to go kind of hand-in-hand -hand with some of this bigger stuff I have that takes up a lot of room. I'm moving some of my bigger stuff outside. Uh, like my uh, rhino iguana is getting a big cage real soon built outside that she can go in for most of the year. So I'm going to try to transition some of those guys to having huge enclosures where I can walk in with them and really interact with them. And they're not super nervous about just me being in their personal space or being in a weird foreign living room. That's awesome, man. Gorgeous animals. What are you uh, pairing up this year outside of tortoises and stuff? Um, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do too much else this year. I wish I could get the, uh, the Bibrani, the Kandoi, Kandoi. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could, if I could get those guys going, I might try them and just put them all together and see what happens. Um, but I'm just trying to get those other two rocking and rolling if they will rock and roll then i'll i'll go for it and give it a, just a shot to see what happens but yeah kind of i think i think i won't this one next year will kind of be more of a bigger year with just putting a lot of stuff together for the first time and things will be kind of big enough to do what they need to yeah man know the feeling definitely know the feeling yeah, I've been kind of growing out. I went through a, a I went through as I feel like everybody does, where like a, a get a bunch of stuff and then I kind of downsize and I downsized some when yep. I had a kid just because I was like, man, I don't have time with a newborn. I was like, I just gave stuff to friends. I was like, if you're interested in this species, just take it because yeah, I just I don't want to neglect stuff because I don't have time for it. And now that my kid's old enough and he'll help me out outside and has semi interest in it i'm like okay it's on now yeah oh for sure for sure the next generation yeah yeah he's Free funny labor. yeah yeah he, he'll do some stuff and some stuff he really really likes and then other stuff he's just kind of like it's funny if i was if i was him as a kid i would have been like a kid in a candy shop but 
I think he's so used to it that it's like he's yeah. been. He's like, yeah, whatever. It's tortoises. Everybody has tortoises. Yeah, it's it's not taboo because he he's he's exposed to it so much. Yeah, other other people with their kids will come over, and he can't understand why these other kids are like flabbergasted. He's like, no, <laughs> come check out my monster trucks, and they're like, <laughs> dude, this guy's got a six foot snake. You're like, I want to hold that. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, whatever. It's a snake. <laughs> yeah, that male brettles was a. Uh was a hit with the neighborhood kids too yeah he he's still rocking he's behind me in one of the the cages behind me uh sad thing this past christmas i lost the female uh uh, i went on vacation to florida and she was good the whole vacation and it's the night i got back i went to check on her i was cooling her down in my garage and uh i went out there and she was just massive prolapse oh jeez Oh God! I was like looking at it, and I was like, "And a uh, vet said it looked kind of cancery." When they looked at it, they're like, "We can't tell what's what." Wow, like, oh, that is what it is. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have bad luck around Christmas time with animals. I've had, <laughs> I've had two dogs, and now a snake die around Christmas. I'm like, oh, jeez, oh, can't get a break. Yeah, man. Yeah, that time of year is tough for for a lot of us especially animal wise yeah oh i hate the winters because it's it's nerve-wracking with trying to just like put all kind of like <clears throat> fail safes in place in case something happens i'm like i have like a generator now i'm like yeah oh god please don't go out power if it's real that cold. And, and hurricane season is always a stressful one oh. yeah especially for phil i'm sure because a he's he's in like oh. hurricane hot zone and then Having all the venomous stuff too. You know, yeah. Like, good lord. Oh, well, I can imagine. Yeah. It's tough. And that's that's honestly why I love having everything now on racks with casters because mm-hmm. the the whole point is to recontainer in a hard shelled container and then store in an inner room with no windows. Well, it that's great if I have, you know, a week notice to do it, but you also can't right. keep animals in a in a deli cup for a week you know what i mean you can't keep a right. five foot cobra in a plastic tub a plastic shoe box for a week yeah it can spend a day or two in a, in a shoe box it's not going to care but at least this way i can wheel stuff into another room wheel it into the inner room so to speak and then if i still if the store moves i can just wheel it back you know or right. better yet we wheel it in the room okay the storm is really hitting now i can container things and whatnot so but i i get nervous in winter and my winter never really drops below 60 degrees so i can imagine mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine what it's like for you guys let alone the people up north so oh yeah you know. yeah robert said it's funny hearing us talk about winter when he's up in New York or Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I want to live in like Central America. I'm like, I don't, I don't want winter. I want like rainy and dry season. Like <laughs> those are the only seasons that I want. Yeah. Well, like and I, I think about like our buddy Mike Gillen, who's up in Canada. Like, it, if he loses power, man, and it's a snowstorm. It. Yeah, it's like, what, what, what do you do? It's just that's a crap load of hand warmers. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Yeah, so, when I lived in Atlanta, I uh, bred the bearded dragons. I had every single winter we would get an ice storm, and Atlanta's woefully ill prepared for that kind of weather. Yeah. Um. So their infrastructure's not there, and we'd lose power for I mean almost a whole day at a time. Mm-hmm. And my only saving grace was I had a wood burning stove in my living room, and I would just move everything into the living room and put everything near that. Yeah. And just was because yeah, my house would drop down super quick, get cold. Yeah, and I was like, God, dog. I remember Hurricane Matthew was sort of the that was the roughest, the roughest one for me because I think I mean I wasn't home for like a week, and yeah. at the time all my stuff was at my parents' house, and that was on here on Ladies Island. I was living across town. No, I stayed at Danny's, Danny at Lisa's house with Danny and and Lisa. So I was like in town. I didn't evacuate, which Katie doesn't appreciate. Um, but like all my stuff was across town and I couldn't really get to it because there's two bridges that are shut down and, you know, it was like, I don't know if I'm coming home to 
like mass casualty or, or what. And I mean, nothing happened to my parents' house or anything, but just the, you know, the the damage to infrastructure, the no power and the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the heat. Cause that was, what month was that? Like, it was like August, October. It was fairly warm. I feel yeah. like, but it wasn't like hot. So it was kind of, I just, that was when my I hatched my first crested that weekend. Yeah, <laughs> the, or the the week that that happened, and so it was like warmer in the room than it should have been for for cresteds at a you know extended period of time. But right, it was just like not being there to know like what's happening, whether a tree just fell through the house or you know anything like that is it sucks because my yeah. parents evacuated. You know, mm -hmm. they were on a cruise. They weren't. They didn't evacuate. They just happened to be out of town. That, Man, as a kid, one of my worst memories, and I'll give my mom crap about this still to this day, is uh, we evacuated for some hurricane, and my sister had horses, and we loaded the horses up to take to family outside of Atlanta. They were horse people, so they had somewhere to put them. But I had, an igu I had my iguana, and I was like, we're bringing Donna. And she's like, no. I'm like, we're bringing horses? We can't bring <laughs> Donna? Like, what's yeah. the other floods? So, yeah, like the last time... Well, the last two hurricanes, Matthew and the other one, I packed everything up. And I was like, I am not leaving my animals to drown to death or get smashed by a tree. Like, I'm just I'm not doing it. And then, so I packed everything up. And I mean, it's, I'm lucky that most of my stuff is, you know, it can handle a week of just being in an uncomfortable situation. And uh, yeah. the tortoises, I can, you know, they're relatively chill. And I just went out to my parents, which... It's out kind of where I live now in uh, Effingham County. So I'm out a little outside of Savannah, just a little bit further inland. So I'm less worried about flash flooding with hurricanes, but yeah, still got to worry about trees going down. But... I'm a, a whopping half a mile from the water. Yeah. And that's the nervous thing is it, when you're so close bad. to the water. Yeah. When we lived in Savannah, I mean, our, our road would flood if it just rained hard. Oh yeah. Jeez. So I was just like, Ugh. Yeah, I'm about uh I I live on a lake, but all the lakes and canal systems around here, they're all interlocked with mm -hmm. their own leveling system per the county, just so that you know, because when you make a community in a swamp, you have to regulate the water. And uh I'm probably oof, eight miles inland from the actual ocean. So I'm not worried about flooding per se, but the whole power situation has come up in theory i was lucky in my last place i lived all the it was a it was a community built around a golf course and all the power lines were underground Ooh, so like all the blast hurricanes we've had for the past say 10 years or so i never lost power at that house because everything was underground you know yeah. if the if there was an accident or lightning strikes or whatever it didn't matter because all of our stuff was still running. And the last hurricane we had before I moved, uh, about eight or 10 hours after the storm had passed, an old lady drove a Buick into a power box and, and that shut down the whole neighborhood. <laughs> she was the hurricane. Yeah, she was the hurricane. So, I mean, they had it up and running in a couple hours, but hurricane uh, Ethel. Hurricane yeah. Ethel. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, real tore up with the la last big named one that hit the west coast down there in florida and tore up uh, iguana land i know uh yeah, yeah. starry i think it was star iguana man their whole basement was flooded bad i was yeah. on, watching their uh, social media I was like oh my god i can't even fathom what that would be like yeah that that, that one that hit the west coast was was pretty bad man a lot yeah. of people lost everything yeah, and just no, nobody expect like people. Are, people know what storm surge is, but they don't expect it to be. You forget as, what it is, what it's yeah, like. Yeah, or you, yeah. you don't. You don't think it's going to affect you because you're, you know, two miles inland, and it's like, well, no, you're going to get affected. It's yeah. that much displacement. Yep. You know that. Yeah, and, and the entire like southeast and most of Florida is like below sea level. Yeah, I mean it's yes and no. It's not it's not actually below sea level, but like right now, my house is exactly twenty eight feet above sea level, naturally. So you okay. incorporate canal systems and waterways and roadways where the road might be at say twelve or fifteen feet above sea level. The houses are at say twenty or twenty one. It doesn't give you much room for error. 
you know, it's like my parents' neighborhood when it, after that last hurricane that uh, that we got, not the one from the West Coast, the one the year before, my my neighborhood, the houses were all dry, but the road itself going through the community was at least three feet of water. Yeah. And it's like you got lucky that the houses were okay, but the road, it's like the the pavement itself was just mm. underwater. Dude, when I was living with my vet buddy, we I think it was Irma. Is that Irma? Yeah, because Irma came right after Matthew, and he was like literally it was like the house, street, houses, water, and like all that storm surge. Like there was straight up minnows in the front yard. Like I was standing there on the grass in the front yard, like wow, probably calf deep. And there was minnows just swimming through the free. It was bizarre. It was so strange. Yeah, yeah. that is one thing I'm lucky in Savannah is we're this like weird little divot where most of the hurricanes just bypass us. And it's yeah. like a blessing and a curse because when Matthew came, it still didn't hit us directly, but we were had been so long before we'd had a Matthew's form of that category a long time. that just the sheer volume of trees that went down was just bonkers. It just took yeah. forever ever to clear roads to get infrastructure back and going uh can't remember the the company one of the rodent companies i just bought a whole bunch of frozen rats and they all went bad and i emailed oh, them, like, hey man can you like help me out and they gave me free shipping and i ordered a bunch more but i was like dude like everything's gone that sucks man yeah it sucks yeah i mean it could have been so much worse i mean all my animals made it through it i didn't lose anything we were yeah. fine my house didn't get totally washed away. I think my carport was like totally annihilated. And uh, so I had to tear all that out. It was like a metal carport, the house we were renting. And me and the landlord tore it out and rebuilt it. Yeah. Well, that's you good. Know, even, even walking around my parents on their property now, you know, flipping stuff and, and looking for snakes, there's still like just a ton of trees that were down by Matthew that mm -hmm. somehow are still growing, like even though they're growing like horizontally. Um, because I, I went out there like right after the storm, like as soon as they opened the bridges up, I went out there and like just walking around the woods, it was like unrecognizable, man. The amount of trees that were down is, is like a, a freaking tree removal company from Avatar just rolled through and yeah, cleared. <laughs> it was so yeah. odd because everything was just nothing but tree branches and stuff and all these giant oaks and stuff just completely like toppled over each other. It is just, just strange. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully none of that anytime soon, especially I have yeah. most of my stuff in like a handy house outside. It makes me so nervous. Any kind of wind and stuff. I'm like, Oh, should I just get everything out of there and move it in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another reason why I've, I've always been skeptical about having offsite facility because wow. you just you just can't i mean obviously if you're at that level where you need one that's totally different but for the average keeper who has a larger collection the offsite facility even, even if it's a, a separate building in the backyard it's not there with you you yeah. know and it's it makes it tough man it does yeah, definitely the uh, little govies have given me a lot of peace of mind. We just, I can, like, before I go to bed, check it. And I can, I have one that's hooked to the Wi Fi. So it'll record all the trends through the whole night. And I could check it in the morning. I can, be like, okay, what did it do all night? Do I need to adjust any of my heaters or air conditioning or anything like that? Yeah. And that has made me, you know, I have it in my, all my outdoor tortoise boxes. And that has made me have given me so much peace of mind. Cause I'm like, okay. Things are better than I even thought they were, which yeah. is a great place to be. Dances with wolves in space, Nate. Not Airbender. Dances with wolves in space. He asked which Avatar. Oh, an Avatar <laughs> is just Dances with wolves in space. I don't. I don't care what anybody says. It's the same damn movie. Well, it's, I, it's, I always considered it a uh, Fern Gully. It's very much. It's, it's Fern Gully. Yeah. There's like exact scenes out of the same movie. Like, yeah. what's Fern Gully? I'm Live like, action. Who Fern are Fern. you? Yeah. How old are you that you don't know Fern Gully? It's one of the greatest movies of my if childhood. You're, if you're staying up late to watch this show and you don't know what Fern Gully is, you need to go to bed because you have school tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great movie. I remember seeing it when all the hype was out and I was like, this is Fern Gully with aliens. Like, <laughs> what was the hype about? <laughs> yeah. I somehow for I don't I I don't know how 
I got roped into seeing that like three times in theaters by like three different people. Jeez, man. I don't remember why, but they were like, you want to go see Avatar? I was like, sure. I was like, I've ever seen it. One of the time it was in IMAX and it was 3D. That was actually pretty sweet. But the other two times, it was a little it was excessive. Uh, speaking of things to see with age, I can't. I think it, I think it was y'all was listening to one of y'all's at work and y'all were talking about uh, Mark O'Shea. Was that you, Phil? Yeah. It was so, a here. Yeah, I was like, oh, I used to love watching Marco Shane. I actually have a couple of his books. And when I got those uh, Kandoi, I was like looking through uh, his book at him. And yeah, he's like responsible for, you know, kind of naming some of that. And like, big adventure is all all time. yeah, I remember y'all saying that. Yeah. And That's he was on uh, Snake Talk, I think. They had him on Snake Talk and he was talking about all those island boa species i was like ah this is awesome that's his wheelhouse man is that whole australasia yeah uh, zone he loves that pop one stuff yeah that's cool stuff over there yeah well, we are at the two hour mark is there anything we need to add no i think we're good man covered a lot we did all right well john we appreciate it yeah, this thanks for having me on, show. guys. As chat. always, brought to you by blackboxcages.com. Use code THN at checkout, get 10% off your order. Uh, pickup option is available if you're in the general northeast Georgia region, somewhere whereabouts. Um, Fullviesapparel.com, use code THN as well, get 15% off your order. Uh, Puget Sound Pythons, Facebook and Instagram, Cold Blooded Caffeine. March Madness 24. I think there's like maybe an hour left to go in that sale, free shipping. So give that a shot. If you're listening to this past April 8th, <laughs> it's over. But you can still get that Snakes and Stogies blend down below the link in the description. Um, Flip and Tin is happening Thursday. And then I think next Thursday... Pain Shab mentioned maybe a Corn Stars episode. Cool. But nice. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll figure that out. But um, flipping ten, the Tallahassee recap is happening. Um, from what I understand, I don't know if I'm going to be in that or not. But either way, it's happening. It'll be live. So same place, same time. Usual suspects, all that stuff. So excellent. We appreciate it. Everybody, have a good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Bye. Bye. Bye.